We halted the Shiv in advance. We sealed off Capella and our people are safe. Maybe forever. No one can fathom how or why the Shivans destroyed the Capella Star. We lost a place many of us called home. We lost entire squadrons, the Colossus, and most of our fleet. We lost so many friends that we celebrate our victory with grief and mourning. From our odyssey into hell, we return with a gift. The ancient technology to build a portal between Delta Serpentis and Sol. To restore the link to our blue planet. To return home after all these years. Centaur Station Control, this is the GTD Orestes. We're making our final run to the Soul Jump Gate. Acknowledged, Orestes. The final run reads clear. Godspeed to your crew. This is the GTC Britonia, powering up subspace drive. We're going in. Roger that. Britonia, we'll see you on the other side. Helm, activate subspace drive. GTD Orestes. Login, Samuel Bay. Encryption key, 6NC22309BA. Greetings, Samuel Bay. You have three unread message, S. Do you wish to access your inbox? I extend a warm welcome to all new officers, crew, and pilots who have recently arrived to the Orestes. I am looking forward to sharing this voyage with all of you. I hope you will find this tour of duty challenging and rewarding. The Orestes is the newest destroyer to be commissioned by GTVA Command. She is the flagship of the 14th Battle Group and has been assigned the honor of leading our first task force through the Sol subspace portal. This mission is the culmination of years of dedication and work by our species. Words cannot adequately convey how proud I am to share in this experience with all of you. The Orestes will be carrying on the legacy of her forebearers, and your service here will only extend the ship's proud history. Serve her well, and you will be distinguished. Greetings, pilot, and welcome to the Orestes. I am Captain Al Fadil, your squadron leader. I will be your liaison to Quarterdeck and will be giving you your briefings and debriefings for each of your sorties. The 222nd Night Wolves has been given the honor of accompanying the 14th Battle Group into Seoul. We have also been given the additional honor of being based aboard the Orestes. So appreciate the luck that has brought you here. 
We at the 222nd have to maintain the superlative record that the squadron has built up over the years. Though the names of the pilots may change, the Nightwolf's tradition clearly has not. I expect each of you to fly to the best of your ability, and I will tolerate no insult to the squadron's name. I will be briefing you on your first mission as soon as the task force enters the solar system. Until then, take some time to familiarize yourself with the schematics of the Orestes on board fighters and bombers. We will be flying many of these strike craft in times to come. Versatility and adaptability. This is what makes an outfit such as ourselves. Captain Al Fadil, 222nd Night Wolves. For the attention of Commander Samuel Bay. I don't know what possessed you to transfer to the Arresti Samuel. You've got some nerve. I still haven't forgiven you for your negligence in the Capellan Massacre. Understand that you'll get no favors from me while you're on board my ship. Also understand that our relationship here will be nothing but professional. Technical Database, GTF Aurora The GTF Aurora is an amalgamation of Interceptor, Reconnaissance Fighter, and Space Superiority Fighter. A swift fighter with six fire points provides a powerful weapons platform able to undertake a variety of missions. The fighter's defining feature, however, is the installation of a sophisticated sensor module based on GDA Charybdis AWACS technology. At 10.40 hours, the GTD Orestes and her battle group exited the Sol subspace node. We are the first personnel outside Sol to travel to the system since the Lucifer Cataclysm 50 years ago. Upon arrival, the Orestes and the GTT Temerer began a sensor sweep of the system. What we have found is not what we were led to expect. Our intelligence data does not correlate with that collected from the unmanned probe sent into the system on a prior mission. We have been unable to identify any ships within the immediate vicinity, nor have we been able to detect any communication activity. We are currently broadcasting GTA transponder codes on all frequencies throughout the system. Without any way of knowing who will respond, we need to send out a reconnaissance flight to find out what's out there. We Night Wolves will be taking a wing of Aurora Recon Fighters to explore the surrounding area. Commander Bay, you will lead Alpha Wing. We need you to jump to Earth Sector and identify any Terrene ships in the area. Orestes Control will be transmitting the coordinates to your flight computer. Once you have arrived at the designated area, follow the patrol pattern and keep your scans active. We do not yet know what state the Earth will be in, so be careful out there. Keep your eyes peeled and maintain your transponder codes at all times. One thing to remember while you're out there, pilots. You'll be the closest anyone in your generation has been to Earth. You are also likely to be the first non-GTA personnel that anyone in Seoul has seen. As a first contact representative of the GTVA, I expect full flight discipline out there. Alpha Wing, form up on me. Roger, sir. Moving to formation. Commander Bay, I'm Lieutenant Corey. It's a pleasure to be flying with you, sir. Ensign Taylor, at your service, sir. Roger that, Corey. Taylor, pleasure to be working with you. Tamara Control, this is the Orestes. You're clear to jump out. Good luck out there. Acknowledge to Resty's control. We'll keep you informed of anything we find. Jumping out, now. Hey, where is the Temerer going? 
to Mars, Alpha 3. Admiral Bay thinks that we'll have a better chance of finding something if we're more spread out through the system. Alpha Wing, your jump coordinates have been transmitted to your navigation computer. You're free to jump at any time. Roger that, OST's control. Alpha Wing, prepare to jump out at these coordinates. We're going to Earth. We're finally going to Earth. Prestige control, we have achieved Earth orbit. We're... What the hell? Holy crap! What the hell happened to Earth? Are we even at Earth? Sensor positioning reads correctly. This is Earth, alright. But... how? What happened? Calibrating sensor pod to scan the planet's surface. Sensor data confirmed. I'm reading no sign of life anywhere on Earth. None. You're right, Commander. In fact, scanners aren't picking up anything on the planet. It's just... rubble. What are those red glows? Are they... volcanoes? I'm reading increased tectonic activity in the Earth's crust, volcanic eruptions, and a planet-wide ash cloud. It looks like the planet was subjected to massive orbital bombardment. There's nothing left. RST's control. I'm transmitting my sensor logs now. Everything's gone. I'm picking up no signs of life in the vicinity. Please advise. Over. Acknowledged. Alpha Wing, we're receiving your sensor feeds now. Orders remain the same. Continue your patrol and update us if you encounter anything. Roger that, Orestes. Continuing patrol. I can't believe it. Everything. Gone. Who did this? I can't believe it either, Alpha 3. Of all the scenarios I had imagined, this was one I never entertained. I had family in San Francisco. How can they all be dead? I had family in Guangzhou, Alpha 3. I understand how you feel, but what can we do about it? All we can do is find out who was responsible for this catastrophe. Commander Bay is right, Taylor. We need to gather information to find out who did this. I'm calibrating my sensors to search for debris other than town. These Aurora sensor modules ought to be good for something. That's a good idea, Alpha 2. Alpha 3, you and I will do the same. Maybe there's whatever's left of whoever did this floating around here somewhere. Roger, Commander. I just wish... I didn't expect to see a dead planet on my first trip to Earth. Damn it. We've reached the first waypoint, making course for the second. Hang on, Alpha One. I've picked up what looks like a faint energy signature. Can't pinpoint the source, but it's coming from around ten clicks from here. My scanners read it too, Alpha Two. Let's go see what it is. Initiating course change. Fine, Corey. I'm okay, it's just... this was just... unexpected. None of us expected this, Alpha 3, but I'm glad you're okay. We'll be back at the Oresty soon enough. They'll know what to do.
it's an escape pod. Confirmed, Alpha 3. This looks like the source of the beacon. The power seems to be all but out, however. No life signs aboard. What do we do with it? Orestes Control, this is Alpha Wing. We've found a derelict escape pod with a transponder, requesting a transport crew to pick it up. Roger, Alpha Wing. We are sending someone on the way now to pick it up. Stay in the area until it arrives. You seem on pretty close terms with Orestes Control, Alpha One. Is the Admiral your father or something? You've both got the same name. I lost my father at Capella, Alpha Three. Are you sure? You both really look similar. Yeah, I'm sure. What the hell kind of question is that, Alpha Three? The guy's father is dead. Sheesh! I was just asking, guy. Okay, okay, I'll leave him alone. There are over 300 bays enlisted in the GTVA, Taylor. The name similarity is just a coincidence. This is the GTT Cyrus. I hear you need something picked up. Good to see you, Cyrus. One escape pod waiting for you right there. We've docked with the escape pod. Initiating subspace now. Okay. Alpha Wing, return to base for debriefing. We'll go over your flight records once you arrive. Good job in finding the escape pod pilots. Analysis has revealed that most of the computer banks remain intact, and extraction of the memory cores is currently in progress. Identification of the escape pod's inhabitants is now underway. Hopefully we'll be able to find out who is responsible for annihilating all life on Earth. We are as mystified by the fate of the Earth as you are, pilots. We came here expecting a joyful reunion with our ancestral home, but instead we find death and destruction. This has been a bitter pill for us to swallow. Orestes Control will transfer our findings to GTVA Command and await further orders. In the meantime, you are dismissed. Do not discuss your findings with anyone until the Admiral decides to release this information. Counseling services are available should any of you require them, pilots. To the officers and crew of the 14th Battle Group, this is Admiral Bay, GTD Orestes. We have begun to finalize preparations to establish our forces in this system. Reconnaissance flights have returned from seeking out sources of Terran activity around Earth and Mars. The data we have gathered is a disturbing contradiction to previous intelligence gathered by surveillance probes sent before us. As yet, we are at a loss as to how to account for the discrepancies we have uncovered. Earth as we knew her is no more. Her proud cities, forests, countless animal species and ecosystems are gone. Our stations and ships, including the First Fleet, are nowhere to be found. Instead, a debris field rings our planet while nothing but scorch marks are all that is left on the ground. By all appearances, our Earth and her colonies throughout the system have suffered the same fate as Vasuda Prime. At present, we do not know who was responsible for Earth's fate. Our analysts are going over data collected from our scans of the system, as well as previous data collected from unmanned probes. We have tried to contact GTVA Command regarding our findings, but have received no response. We suspect that due to the nature of the subspace portal, even transmissions at maximum strength have difficulty in traveling through. We are deploying the GTC Duke through to Delta Serpentis to re-establish contact with command. In the meantime, our primary objective is to search the system for any survivors of the attack. I am ordering the fleet to maintain a heightened state of alertness until we have confirmed the nature of these findings. The similarity of the attack to the one at Vesuda Prime suggests a Shivan origin. Currently, there is no way to tell if Shivan forces are still in the system, or whether they have left through another uncharted jump node. 
Our secondary objective in this system is to identify any alternative entry and departure points from the system. Shivan movements in the first and second Shivan incursions suggested that they are as dependent on subspace nodes as we are. If that is the case, there should be another subspace node somewhere in the system. We shall grieve for our blue planet, but in the fullness of time. Our main objective is to secure the sector and ensure the safety of our ships in the days to come. All right, Nightwolves, it's time for another reconnaissance mission. As you have just heard, Earth is toast, and so is every other colonized planet and moon in this system. Until intelligence is finished analyzing that shuttle we picked up, we have no idea when this attack occurred. Either our probes were picking up false signals, or the attack happened right between the probe deployments and our arrival here. Assuming the attack was relatively recent, there's got to be some survivors out there. Orestes Tactical has identified several areas in the system that could serve as ideal hiding spots for survivors. We've been sent to patrol the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter orbits. The density of the field makes it a hazardous place, but it also scrambles any external sensor sweeps. Very handy for anyone who needs to hide out for a while. Commander Bay, you'll be taking Alpha Wing. Since you seem to be doing just fine with Taylor and Corey, they'll be joining up with you for this mission. Pilot Nehru will be coming with you as well. He has just arrived from the Temeraire and he's been itching to get some action. I will be taking Zeta Wing into another part of the asteroid field. We'll keep in communication and coordinate our searches together. Keep your eyes peeled and your sensors at the maximum. If there's someone in there, we will find them. RSC's control, Alpha Wing is in the asteroid field. All fighters, form up on me. We read you, Alpha Wing. We've uploaded the search pattern into your flight navigation computer. Good luck out there. Lieutenant Nehru here, Alpha One. Glad to be working with you, sir. Welcome to the team, Nehru. Sir, are you really the Admiral's son? I've just heard stuff going around, and... Everyone asks him that, Nehru. He's denied it every time. What? Do I need to put up a great big sign on my fighter saying, Not the Admiral's son. He's not my father. Uh, okay, sir. Sorry for asking. Alphawing, did you read that? My senses have picked up an object not far from here. It seems similar to the one we found at Earth Sector. Might be another pod. Let's go check it out. It's no escape pod. It's a fighter. A Sheban fighter. Confirmed. Manticore class. Aristus Control, we have a problem here. We read you, Alpha Wing. The situation has been updated. Destroy that Sheban fighter. Roger, Consider it done. Sheban fighter is toast. Didn't put up a fight at all. Uh, Commander? 
I think we just woke something up. We got hostiles all around us. They're coming in fast. Who are they? I hear you, Bob. Sheevans. We've got Sheevan dragons coming in. All pilots. Evasive maneuvers. Free fire acknowledged, sir. Maurice is control. We need an update. There's too many of them. Get us out of here, Resty's control. Stand by, Alpha Wing. We are sending reinforcements. They will be arriving soon. Alpha Wing, for the moment we're stuck here until reinforcements arrive. Fight for your very life. Each one of you. Roger that, Zeta-1. All fighters, return to base on the double. We're sending out a full assault wing to sweep the area. The Shivan presence in the asteroid was entirely unexpected and has great implications regarding the attack on Earth. We think the fighters you encountered were remnants of the attack force responsible for the Earth devastation. They must have missed their ticket back home. Admiral Bay believes they were put there into standby until the destroyer or transport arrived to pick them up. Our incursion into the field must have reactivated them. Still, your flying out there was excellent, pilots. Outnumbered and outgunned by advanced Shivan fighters, you managed to fight them off and come away alive. Admiral Bay has decreed that all surviving pilots in your wing receive the Distinguished Flying Cross for superlative flying under difficult conditions. Wear it with pride. Our analysts have finished recovering data from the escape pod found in the debris field around Earth. What they found appears to be a recording taken shortly before the escape pod lost main power. An autopsy of the escape pod's inhabitants concluded that they had been dead for several decades. Time stamping data on the footage confirms these findings. Attached is an encrypted copy of the footage, accessible only by those of commander rank and higher.
The information you have just received is classified. Dissemination of said information is punishable under the GTVA Security Act, Deneb Convention. To the officers and crew of the GTD Orestes, our work here is finished. We came here on an intelligence gathering mission, but are left with more questions than when we started. We traveled here to make contact with Earth, only to find there is no Earth to make contact with. All that is left in this system is death and memories of what used to be. The Shivans were responsible for the death of our world, leaving no survivors. They arrived, destroyed our ships and bombarded Earth, Mars, and every colony in the system. The remnants of the Shivan attack force were encountered and destroyed by our reconnaissance flights. Even after our work here, the hard questions remain. How did the Shivans enter this system? When did the attack occur? Why did our probes send back false information? GTVA Command has not responded to any of our transmissions. Furthermore, we have lost contact with the GTC Duke, who has not returned from Delta Serpentis. I have thus ordered the fleet to move back through the node. All future reconnaissance flights are cancelled, and all fighters are to return to dock. Now is the time to grieve. It is now time to share news of this tragedy with the rest of the lost generation. For the attention of Commander Samuel Bay, your transfer request to the Orseus has been approved. It will take place upon successful arrival to Delta Serpentis. I must admit to some surprise and relief upon your return to the Orestes after the Shivan ambush. I am sure your mother would have been very proud of you. I know we both have had our differences in the past, but your mother would not have wished this rift between us. Send me a communique when you have the chance. We've got the situation, pilots. One hour ago, the Orestes and her battle group exited from the Sol Jump Node. Centaur Station and the Sol Portal are nowhere to be found. We are also unable to get in contact with GTVA Command. Admiral Bay has ordered a red alert until the current situation has been resolved. We've picked up the GTC Duke on long-range sensors heading towards the Ross 128 jump node. She's not responding to our hails and has not shifted course. This qualifies as desertion under the GTVA Security Convention and thus the Duke and her captain are considered rogue. We are sending a wing out to apprehend the Duke before she jumps through the node. Bay, you are the most experienced pilot in this squadron. You will be taking Terra and Cory as Alpha Wing. In case the Duke jumps out before you, you are to follow the Duke through to Ross 128. To this end, the Orestes flight deck has prepared jump-capable fighters for you to fly. Try to keep them intact, will you? Orestes Control, we have a visual on the Duke. She is five kilometers from the Ross 128 jump node. Alpha 1 to the GTC Duke. You are ordered to power down your engines. Do this immediately or we will disable you by force. This will be your only warning. What the hell was that? RSC's control, the Duke has sent a transmission. We are unable to determine the message. Confirm. Over. Confirmed, Alpha Wing. It looks like encrypted transmission data. Attempting to decrypt it now. The GTC Duke has not halted its progress to the node. Corey, Taylor, target the Duke's engines. Open fire. What the? We've got human fighters jumping in. Alpha Wing, engage evasive maneuvers. I'm on it. What the hell is Shivan's doing in Delta Serpentis? I hear you, boss. This guy is mine. With the
cabeza. Roger that. Disabling engines now. I'm on it. The Duke has escaped through the jump node. Acknowledge, pilots. Jumping after her, but be careful. We're sending the Temeraire after you into Rust 128. She'll be supporting your operation there. Orestes Control, out. Personal log, Commander Bay. A lot has happened. None of it seems real. Ever since we went through the portal, everything has just been one big nightmare. A dead Earth, Sheevans, the disappearance of Centaur Station and Command, and now the GTC Duke, whose crew seems to have either mutinied or gone plain crazy. What was that message they sent us? As I write this entry, my fighter wing is about to enter Ross 128 to apprehend Duke. GTVA forces in the area should be able to assist us. But somehow, I don't think there's going to be anyone there when we arrive. We've reached Ross 128, unable to detect any GTVA forces in the area. I'm on it. Alpha Wing, hit your burners and target the Duke's engines. Got a wing of Sheevan fighters. Astaroth. We've got a Rakshasa cruiser jumping in too. What the hell is going on? Tally, sir, I'm on it. Alpha Wing, we need to buy some time until our jump drive is done. Engage those fighters. Prefer acknowledged, sir. The Duke has jumped. Damn it! How did they manage to recharge their engines so quickly? Victory the Duke's destination. Looks like it's heading towards the Lara of the Junction. Similar, how close are you to arriving? We are in transit through subspace, Alpha Wing. We will be arriving in the area in a few minutes. Continue to follow the Duke pilot. We'll be right behind you. Okay, Alpha Wing. Subspace engines have recharged. Let's head out. Damn it to hell! How's the Duke managed to jump out so close to the node? I'm more concerned at how quickly they've been able to recharge their jump drive. Cruisers are not supposed to have comparable subspace maneuverability to fighters. Well, if you push your engines hard enough, it's possible. The engineer of the Duke must be a genius to keep it going this long. Still, they can't keep on like this. Their reactor's going to fail if it's placed under much more pressure. I don't remember there being an Orion Hulk in this system. Hell, I don't remember there being nobody in this system. Where the hell are we? Avoid that Orion. It's the Minnow. Confirmed. The registry matches that of the GTD Minnow. No life signs aboard. He's been wrecked. I'm starting to think the universe is playing some kind of colossal joke on us. What the hell are you talking about? This isn't our universe. We're not supposed to be here. Taylor, Corey, enough. Jump out and follow me. We need to follow the Duke just a little while longer. We'll be back home before you know it. Alpha Wing, we've reached the Ross 128 system. The Bretonia, La Bouchere, and Solus are with us. We're continuing to track your progress. Temeraire out.
personal log, Commander Bay. The Duke continues to lead us on a wild chase. We followed it from Delta Serpentis to Ross 128, but somehow it outmaneuvered us and escaped into the Laramus system. From there, it continued to evade us to the N362 jump node. N362? Why the hell does it want to go there? Our official orders were to consider the behavior of the commanding officer as criminal and to apprehend the ship as such. Having chased the Duke through two systems, I'm starting to believe her crew's intentions are rooted more from insanity than mere insubordination. Sensor readings from my fighter wing revealed power fluctuations within the cruiser systems. If this is the case, then a reactor failure is indeed imminent. Something is not right about all this. Why is Delta Serpentis, Ross 128, and Laramus empty of any GTVA vessels, save for Great War Hulks? Why haven't we had contact with Command? What are Sheevans doing in our systems? <sighs> Taylor quipped about this not being our universe, but now I'm starting to believe her. Taylor? Corey? Where are you? I've emerged ten lighters away from your position, Alpha One. Crap, I don't even know where I am. Damn. Looks like the gravitational pull of the neutron star played havoc with our subspace engines. We're going to have to recalibrate our navigation computers. Huh? I don't think this fighter is the hardware for that, Alpha One. We'll just stick tight and wait for the Tamara. Where's the Duke? The Duke's right in front of me. Looks like I got lucky with regard to jumping in at the right place. Looks like I timed it right too. Her reactor's completely down. Finally, it's this useless goose chase. What are you going to do, sir? I'm going to board the Duke, ascertain the status of the crew. It's time for some answers. Roger, sir. Be careful. I will, Taylor. I'll keep my sidearm handy, in case I meet any trouble from the crew. Personal log, Commander Bay. The GTC Duke is a haunted ship. No one was there to greet me at the airlock when I broke through to the Duke's corridors. The entire ship was silent. My skin crawled as soon as I left my environment suit and the hair stood up at the back of my neck. I felt as though I was being watched as I made my way to the Duke's bridge. The crew were at their stations, but they were in some kind of stupor. Every one of them, including Captain Sasana, they didn't respond to my presence, they just sat there, with their sightless eyes staring. It sent chills down my spine just to look at them. They were alive, but not, as though something had taken away their souls, their essence, their psyche. And the ship, oh, the ship seems possessed. I heard Voices? Ghostly footsteps down the hallways? The strange thing was, I recognized some of those voices. I've heard them before. In my dreams. Those voices were manning the ship in place of the crew. Ancient, ancient voices. Something happened to the Duke and her crew in Delta Serpentis. Something that possessed the ship and drove the crew into Catatonia. There was nothing else I could do. I returned to my fighter and awaited the arrival of the Temeraire. What the? Unknown fighters. Identify yourselves. This is Commander Bay of the 222nd Nightwolves, GTD RSDs. I repeat, 
This is Commander Bay of the GTD Orestes, GTVA 14th Battle Group. Identify yourselves immediately. They're not responding. This doesn't look good. Unknown fighter, your GTVA designation is not known to us, nor do we recognize the designs of your ships. GTVA, Galactic Terran Vasudan Alliance, formed in 2358 under the Beta Aquilae Convention. We've been the largest power in these systems for decades. How can you not have heard of us? You are speaking to Captain Iwakura of the Terran Sleeper Ship Sanctuary. We know of Vasudans, but not your Terran Vasudan Alliance. We were unaware of any Terran presence in this system save our own. You say you're from a sleeper ship. Where is it? The Sanctuary's hiding, Commander Bay, and has been for the past 50 years. If you had any sense, you would be hiding too. Hiding? From what? Shivans. They are everywhere, and they are looking for us. Already we have lingered for too long. The enemy knows we are here. They are coming. The Shivans have sent their demon to hunt us down. Captain Iwakura, I request that you and your wingman assist me in protecting the lives aboard the GTC Duke. Against a demon, Commander? How are the three fighters going to repel its attack? I've got reinforcements on the way, Captain. We just have to hold them off for a few minutes. Alright, Commander. Our guns are yours for now. Commander Tell. Form up around the GTC Duke. We've got bombers launching from the Kaiton.
This is the Temeraire. All fighters, stand clear of the SD Chiton. Targeting the Chiton with primary photon beam cannons. Gunnery control, open fire. This is the GTD Temeraire. Alpha-1, what is your status? Systems remain functional, Temeraire. The GTC Duke has been apprehended. Her crew will require some medical attention and the ship will need repairs to her reactor. Your ships are as beautiful as they are powerful, Commander Bay. Your presence here in the system will give our people hope, such as we have not had for decades. Unidentified fighters, your transponder codes are inactive. Identify yourselves immediately. We had them silenced so as not to draw the Sheevans to ourselves. Due to your intervention, the danger has passed. Activating IFF codes. IFF confirmed. Terran fighters, you are requested to dock with our ship for the time being. We wish to ask you some questions. Acknowledge, Temere. Making course for your fighter bay. Alpha-1, your mission is complete. Dock with us for your debriefing. What about the rest of my wing? We will rendezvous with them soon, assuming they have not left their positions. Welcome to the GTD Temeraire pilot. Rear Admiral Carey has approved your temporary transfer until we re-establish contact with the GTD Orestes. In the meantime, you'll report to me. I'm Captain Chris Day of the 56th Squadron. Good work in apprehending the GTC, Duke. We're in the process of transferring the crew to the GTL Solace for analysis and treatment. Repair crews are fixing most of the damage in her hull, and her reactor will be repaired within the day. Say what you will about the Vasudans. At least they know how to build their reactors to last. Don't worry, Commander, your wingmen are safe. We picked them up not too long ago at various points in the system. Apart from some minor damage to their fighter's navigation computers, they were fine. Questioning of pilots Iwakura and Tell is scheduled for 2100 hours tonight. You're ordered to attend and assist with your own report. In the meantime, you're off duty. Dismissed. Officers, crew, and personnel of the GTD Temeraire. We have established our presence in the N362 system, and surrounding space appears to be clear of hostiles. Our navigation computer has compensated for the gravitational influence from the neutron star. The crew of the GTC Duke has been transferred to the GTL Solace, and a temporary replacement crew for the cruiser has been assigned. Upon questioning of Captain Iwakura and Commander Tell, we have ascertained that there is a significant discrepancy between GTVA historical records and theirs. Our records show that the Lucifer was successfully destroyed in transit between Delta Serpentis and Sol, resulting in the collapse of the node. According to Iwakura and Tell, the mission to destroy the Lucifer failed, which resulted in the destruction of Earth and the annihilation of every colony in Sol. The GTA was unable to organize another assault against the Lucifer, and was subsequently overwhelmed by the Shivan Armada. Captain Iwakura claimed to be from the Terran sleeper ship Sanctuary. The Sanctuary is a modified Orion-class destroyer that was under construction during the Great War. Upon losing contact with Earth in the First Fleet, the GTA began devising an operation to evacuate as many people as possible from contested systems. The Sanctuary was modified to support passengers in hibernation. However, her systems were mostly incomplete and vulnerable to Shivan attack. The remnants of GTA forces attempted a final incursion against Chivan forces, as the Sanctuary made her way from Delta Serpentis to N-362, where interference from the Neutron Star would conceal her from Chivan scouts. The distraction succeeded, and the Sanctuary was able to pass through undetected. She has remained in the system to this day, waiting for the Chivans to leave. As far as her crew is aware, they are the only Terrans left alive in the entire galaxy. 
With such a discrepancy between our respective historical records, it can only be concluded that we have somehow reached an alternate universe to our own. If this is the case, then we are the first Terrans in history to have achieved interdimensional travel. While speculation on the phenomenon of alternate dimensions exists, actual travel between universes has remained unproven and unrecorded. The most likely time point of entry to this universe would be during our transit from Delta Serpentis to Sol. Engineering reported fluctuations in both the Orestes and the Temeraire's meson reactors when entering the portal. But as power integrity was not affected, it was deemed an isolated anomaly. Further studies will have to be undertaken to determine the nature of these fluctuations and how they relate to our current situation. We are also working on a solution regarding the return to our home universe. Contact with the Orestes is intermittent and sparse. Although we have dropped communication buoys throughout Ross-128 and Laramis, the vast distances require significant transit times for our transmissions. We have informed the Orestes of our findings, but it will take some time before we receive an answer. In the meantime, we are establishing a rendezvous with the sleeper ship's sanctuary. Captain Iwakura has informed us that the sanctuary is based in the nebula surrounding the neutron star N362. The volatility of the nebula makes for an ideal hiding environment, but due to extreme gravitational forces, it is a forbidding and perilous place to navigate. Rear Admiral Carey, GTD Temeraire. Welcome to Quarterdeck, Commander. Although this space is usually reserved for squadron leaders, the importance of this mission necessitates that I brief you directly for your next sortie. Captain Iwakura has specifically requested you to join her in the N362 Nebula, so I have assigned you leadership over Alpha Wing in this mission. You and your wing are to follow Captain Iwakura into the Nebula as part of an expeditionary force. We cannot risk sending any of our capital ships in due to the intense gravitational forces within the Nebula. The shielding of your fighters should be sufficient to protect your hull from the gravitational pull for a short while. Captain Iwakura will have situational command of this sortie. Keep within visual range of Captain Iwakura's fighter, and maintain your shield integrity at all times. Flight deck has prepared a wing of Aurora fighters. The sensor module on the fighter will give you extended sensor capabilities within the nebula, giving you an advantage should there be any hostile contact. Choose wingmen that you trust, Commander. Your wing is going to be first contact to the Sanctuary, and I expect each one of you to act appropriately as ambassadors of the GTVA. We're in Temeraire Control. The area is highly ionized. Severe gravitational eddies exist in all directions. Well, I'm glad we managed to all jump in at the same place. How anyone can stay in a place like this is beyond my understanding. This has been the home of our people for 50 years, Alpha Wing. We have been given little choice. How long have you been serving the Sanctuary, Captain? All my life, Alpha One. Commander Tell and I are both children of Great War veterans. We are two of the very few qualified pilots on board the Sanctuary. How many pilots? Two? Three squadrons? We have not your squadrons of fighters, Ensign. We've been out here without logistical support for the past five decades. We've had to cannibalize every fighter we had for parts and repairs. Our Apollos and Volks were used up all within the first two years. Now we have a hodgepodge of five fighters which no longer resemble their original selves. Alpha Wing, did you see that? Unknown contact. Passed by about 20 meters from my position. Negative, Commander. I didn't see anything. Me neither. The nebula is full of phantom ships, Alpha One. Some on the sanctuary have gone mad from their visions. They are the ones we put back into cryogenic sleep until the nightmares subside. Phantom ships? 
I have never seen them myself. Some people claim that they are the result of psychosis. We've had psychologists study the effects of the nebula on the human brain ever since we came here. Bunch of rumors and hallucinations. We've been scouting the nebula for years and have come across naught but Shivans. Rendezvous position. ETA around one minute. Picking up energy signatures up ahead. Captain, the Sanctuary is hailing us. This is the Sanctuary to all fighters. Recall, recall. We're under attack by a Shivan force. Multiple fighter and bomber wings. Sanctuary, this is Captain Iwakura. We have reached your position, scrambling to help. Our wings, protect the Sanctuary! Prefer Captain, it's good fortune that you have arrived as you did. We're not going to last long against these bombers. Proceed to dock with Captain Iwakura. Are those Terran fighters? Affirmative. Sanctuary control. We have finally made contact with a Terran presence outside our own. This is Commander Bay of the GTBA 14th Battle Group. Greetings, Sanctuary Control. I come on behalf of the GTBA to establish contact with your forces for our mutual benefit and safety. I ask permission to come aboard and meet with your commanding officer. Permission granted, Commander. Proceed to dock with the fighter bay, and quickly. More Shivan forces are imminent.
We are honored by your presence, pilots of the GTVA. Welcome to the sanctuary, the last refuge of our people and our final hope for survival. We have already heard from Captain Iwakura about your origins and your ships. While the circumstances of our meeting are certainly strange, it is no less welcome for that. We will establish communications with your command ship and initiate preparations for evacuating the nebula. It will not be long before the Shivans arrive in greater force, and we need to be away from the system before this happens. Thanks to your presence, our spark of hope has grown. This is Temeraire Control. Scans read the area as secure. We are ready to receive you, Admiral. We copy Temerer control. The Admiral's shuttle is launching now. Corey, Taylor, take up escort positions around the Admiral's shuttle. I don't see the point of this ceremony. Shivans could be back at any moment. Why are we wasting time on this? Doesn't the word tradition mean anything to you, Taylor? This is the standard DTVA procedure for initiating diplomatic contact with a new faction. We've always been doing this. Standard GTVA procedure? There is no GTVA. The GTVA is all the way in some parallel universe that we can't get to. The GTVA is here too, Taylor. The GTVA exists wherever there is a ship that acts in the service of the Alliance. The GTVA existed in the nebula beyond Gamma Draconis. The GTVA existed in the space beyond the second Gnosis. When we came over to this universe, we brought the GTVA over with us. This includes its traditions, its mission, its ideals, and its history. This also includes this ceremony. Sir, do you really believe that? Lost in some alternate universe, far away from home and family, ceremonies like this are still important? I do, Taylor, and I believe that all the ideals we were taught while serving the GTVA are going to get us through all this. You should feel honored, pilots of the GTVA. Who else would be given an invitation to fly Honor Guard for an admiral from another universe? Now that alone would make this a special occasion. The invitation was the very least the Admiral could do. After all, you defended the Sanctuary from a Sheevan attack with bravery and skill. 
I'm surprised she didn't award you an order of Galate. You see, Taylor, this universe isn't so different after all. We share some similarities in the way Command awards its pilots. Or doesn't, as the case may be. I believe I'm going to enjoy serving with your GTVA. Is every pilot wing like yours, Commander Bay? Corey and Taylor are pretty unique, I admit, but I'd trust them to watch my back any time. Well, as far as leaders go, Commander, you're not all that bad either. Amazing. Your ships truly are as beautiful as that what Kira has told. You can thank the Vasudans for that. They've been instrumental in designing our current generation of ships since the second Shivan incursion. Plus, this is only about half the power we brought with us. Wait until you see the Orestes. The Admiral is on board, Alpha Wing. Dock with the Temeraire for your debriefing. And welcome back. Welcome back to the Temeraire, Alpha Wing. From what I've heard from Rear Admiral Carey, she's been rather impressed with the manner by which you conducted yourself in your ambassadorial position. I think you can expect to serve more unofficial first contact sorties in the near future if you keep this up. Everyone on board is excited to hear about our contact with the Sanctuary. First negotiations are underway, so we should be able to get a better understanding of this universe and how things work here. In the meantime, the Admirals authorized you to either sit in at the negotiations or take a rest, whichever you feel is best. I'm sure we'll hear about the results soon enough anyway. We have made first contact with the Sanctuary and have begun her integration with our battle group. She has undergone minor repairs with the assistance of the logistics ship Solace, but for the most part has successfully maintained hull and systems integrity. Inspection by the Solace's engineers has revealed the Sanctuary to be fully self-reliant and self-sufficient. Modified dust intakes collect nebula gas and there is a full fuel processing facility aboard the ship. Moreover, the Sanctuary holds tens of thousands of Great War refugees in cryogenic suspension waiting for the day that humankind could claim another planet as home.
Upon hearing of our origins, Admiral Nishiev has made her intentions clear regarding the future of the ship and her passengers. The Admiral and her crew wish to follow us back to our home universe, where humanity has not been destroyed by the Shivans and where mankind still has a home among the stars. Although we have, at present, no means or understanding of how to return to our universe, I have accepted the request of the Sanctuary's crew to accompany us. From a humanitarian perspective, we cannot condemn these refugees to a life in hiding, waiting for the Shivans to determine their fate. Nor can we deny ourselves the company of what is likely to be the only remaining human presence in these systems. The destruction of the SD Chitin appears to have captured the attention of Shivan forces in Laramis. Shivan activity has intensified within N362, and Reconnaissance reports a large number of Shivan warships entering the system from the Laramis jump node. A number of Shivan warships are based at the node, preventing any ship from leaving the system. This presents us with a tactical difficulty. The blockade is of sufficient strength to challenge our warships, and without the help of the Orestes battle group, we cannot guarantee the survival of our ships if we attempt to break through. Communications difficulties prevent us from coordinating an assault with the Orestes. There is also no way to tell if a similar blockade is being set up on the far side of the node, in the Laramis system. This has significantly limited our strategic options, and time is growing short. Fortunately, there exists an alternative exit strategy. Navigation logs were downloaded from the Duke's computer to ascertain the final destination of the possessed cruiser. Reconnaissance at those coordinates revealed a striking find, a Nosos artifact. This is the only knowledge that we have had of a Nosos portal in this system, although it has been theorized that several unstable subspace nodes must exist, due to the intense gravitational forces exerted by the N362 star. The portal appears to have been only recently activated, most likely by a communication from the Duke once it had arrived in the system. The activation of the portal might also account for the increased Shivan activity. Though we have no idea where the portal leads, it presents a more attractive target than running blockades in Shivan contested systems. I have ordered our ships to make for the portal. To maximize our chances of success, the Temerar will be making a diversionary attack at the Laramis node in an effort to draw Shivan forces away from the rest of the battle group. Although the Temeraire was designed for rear line operations, she is still a formidable offensive platform and the most powerful warship we have available. Our onboard mounted torpedo launchers should also give us a tactical advantage over Shivan capital ships, so long as we outrange their main beam cannons. We have yet to regain contact with the GTD Orestes. We have no idea as to the status of the destroyer and can only assume that we make this journey alone. Should our fortunes turn against us today, keep with you this affirmation. I have been honored to serve with you all, and I have no doubt in my mind that the Temeraire is home to the finest crew in the GTVA. Godspeed. All right, 56th. We've got our backs up against the wall with nowhere to run. We've been cut off from the Orestes battle group and have been forced into making a run for the Gnosis portal. The Shivans are moving into this system like flies onto a corpse, and there's precious little time to prepare. Rear Admiral Carey has ordered the battle group to split into two groups. The first group, composed of the Sanctuary, the Solace, La Boucher, Duke, and Bretonia, will make a run for the node. You've been assigned to cover their retreat alongside elements from the 61st Squadron. The Temeraire and her fighter wings are to form the second group. They will be assaulting Shivan positions at the Laramis Jump Node in an attempt to draw as many Shivan forces away from the Nosos portal as possible. Be thankful you don't have to be in that firestorm, pilots. Scouting wings report a number of Shivan vessels near the portal. Two Rakshasa-class cruisers are in the area, with two wings of Mara fighters as escorts. The Maros will be your primary targets, but do not spend too long taking them out. Our ships will be entering the system soon after you arrive, and will be making their way to the portal. We need the anti-ship firepower of the Shivan cruisers minimized if our ships are going to survive the gauntlet. Of course, don't expect the rest of the Shivans in the system to sit idly by while we steal the last vestiges of humanity from under their noses. So expect further Shivan forces to arrive. You'll be operating without logistical support pilots. The majority of the Temeraire's resources have been spent preparing for the assault at the Laramis node. Try to save your secondary armament, since you'll have nothing to replace it with over the course of this mission. For this reason also, choose your armament selection carefully. You may consider arming yourselves with trebuchet missiles and Maxim cannon in order to disarm warship beams at long range. 
the Myrmidon's fighter bomber refit makes it compatible with Cyclops torpedoes. Control, we're in. I've got a visual on the Nosos portal. Two cruisers and two wings of Mars are in the area. Yes, sir. All fighters, form up on me. Engage targets at my command. Tally, sir. 56th, be advised. The Duke will be jumping in momentarily. Neutralize as many targets as you are able before she arrives. Delta wing standing by for bomber support. Alpha 1, call us in at your discretion. Bad, sir. You shame. I hear you, boss. Roger this guy is mine. Targeting the cruisers. Tally, sir, I'm on him. One of the cruisers is down. Good work, people. I hear you, boss. This guy is mine. Tally, sir. I'm on him. GTC Duke has arrived in the area. We're making our way to the portal. Tamarair here. We've engaged a Ravana destroyer at the Laramus node. We're taking losses, but we've got the upper hand. So far. Yes, you did. Lakshmi Wing is targeting us. Send some fighters to break their attack. The second Shivan cruiser neutralized. You make the GTVA proud, pilots. Roger that. Share. Moving towards Nosos Port. Roger that. Kane class cruiser has jumped in. Designation Reza Kill. She's targeting the Labusha.
base arrived. This is it. Victoria has arrived. Target acquired. Heads up. Enemy wing closing in. Roger that, sir. Engaging your target. Free fire acknowledged, sir. Not bad, sir. Solace on station. Bandits incoming! Sally, sir. I'm on him. Nephilim bombers. Watch out for the shockwave from their warheads. Free fire acknowledged, sir. Sanctuary. We were ambushed by a Shivan cruiser. We need some bomber support. The Gosher chopping out. See you on the other side. Captain Iwakura here, Commander Bay. The Sanctuary's fighters are at your service. I hear you, boss. This guy is mine. The Nabrus is on an attack vector towards the Sanctuary. Take out his beam cannon now. More fighters jumping in. Oh god, when will it end? Free fire acknowledged, sir. Delta Wing, now on stage. So you want me to... not shoot him? Breaking to attack. The Razakel has been destroyed. Is the Tamaran. Shivan warheads have hit us hard. We've got damage to several critical systems. We're heading to the portal. We fought all the time we could. Breaking to attack. the Sheevan counter-attack, but they're right behind us. It won't be long until they arrive. Sweet fortune, she's barely holding together. All fighters, protect the Temeraire. She must not fall. Down. 
Yes, sir. We've got a destroyer coming in. Ravana class. Oh, hell. This is it. We're all dead. Stay cool, everyone. I repeat, stay cool. We're gonna make it through this, I swear. Our torpedoes should be able to take out the destroyer, but we need those forward beam cannons taken out. Picking up a fighter launch from the Able. Be careful, sir. Tally, sir. I'm on him. Free fire acknowledged, sir. destroyed. We did it. Personal log, Commander Bay. Well, we did it. We got everyone through safely. The Temeraire, her ships, and the Sanctuary are now in the hands of fate and fortune. No one knows what's on the other side of the Nosos portal. All that we know is it's connected to those beings who possessed the Duke and brought her here. And it was here where we found the Sanctuary. Coincidence? Maybe not. Whoever designed this to happen can't be all that bad if they gave us the opportunity to save these refugees from the Shivans. I wonder what has happened to the Orestes and the rest of the battle group. I hope they're okay, wherever they are. And I hope we'll be able to join up with them again before this is all over. Closing in on the Orestes. Alpha Wing, hit your burners and give us a set of the bomb in the room. Do not engage the SD hype. We will be able to destroy ourselves. We 
recharging jump engines for subspace entry. Estimate optimal charge in 10 minutes time. Delta Wing, now moving to disable Lucifer beam cannons. This is the Boreas. We've suffered heavy beam damage to our weapons reactor. We've lost power to our forward beams. Commander's personal log. It happened again, the same dream, the dream about the Orestes. Every night for the past couple of nights, ever since we met up with the Sanctuary, I've just got this feeling that something terrible has happened, or is about to happen. Maybe it's the feeling that I'm never going to see my father and the Orestes ever again. GTD Temeraire. Login, Samuel Bay. Encryption key. To the officers and crew of the GTD Temeraire and her accompanying ships, we've made the trip through hell and come out the other side. We withstood everything the Shivans threw at us to come to this place. We are now in uncharted territory and have gone where no Terran or student has ever been in recorded history. Since we have arrived here, no Shivan vessel has followed us through the Nosos portal. We do not yet know the reason for this, but have welcomed the respite. We've taken the opportunity to undergo minor repairs and send out reconnaissance flights to probe the immediate area. I'm keeping the battle group on heightened alertness, as action may come upon us at any time. Stay vigilant, and be ready to be on call should the time come. Rear Admiral Carey, GTD Temeraire. Hey Commander. Yes, it's me, Taylor. I just wanted to thank you for, you know, being there for me and Corey. I know he wouldn't normally say anything, but we've been through a lot lately, and 
You've helped us out a lot in keeping us together. Listen, I just wanted to say, if you ever need someone to watch your back out there, you can count on us. Thank you for coming to Quarterdeck, Commander. This is a matter of some urgency, regarding classified information, so I'm bypassing your squadron leader and briefing you directly. Due to your recent record of service regarding the first contact of the Sanctuary, and your ability to operate without logistical support, I'm authorizing your posting as first contact operative. You are aware that we have sent several scouting wings to recon the area over the last few hours. A short time ago, we sent a flight to investigate a signal coming from elsewhere in the system. We lost contact with the wing shortly after they entered the area. Now, we are at present unaware of what forces this system contains, and whether we should expect them to be hostile. I want you to go to their last known position, and find out what happened to our fighters. I've ordered the hangar crew to prepare a stealth fighter for you to fly. We are trusting you to undertake this possible first contact scenario with due caution and discipline as befitting a pilot of the GTVA. This is Alpha-1. I've reached the last known coordinates of the recon wing, picking up two signals up ahead. Computer does not recognize the target silhouette. Temera control, this is a possible first contact situation. Please advise. Over. Acknowledged Alpha-1. Unknowns have been designated as potentially hostile. We do not know what their sensor capabilities are, so don't get too close. Sensors aren't picking up any life signs in the fighters. I don't even know what material these ships are made out of. Are they organic? Negative, Temere. Material appears to be crystalline in structure. The computer can't recognize the compound, however. And no ones have jumped out, vectoring their destination. They're heading deeper into the system. Temera Control, shall I follow them? Follow them, Alpha One, but be careful and update us on the situation once you arrive. Temera Control, I'm picking up another ship in the area. Silhouette is also unidentifiable. Unknown fighters have taken up escort positions. Temera Control? Temera, do you copy? Thank <laughs> you. 
Alpha-1, Commander Bay, this is Temeraire Control. Please respond. Temeraire Control, this is Alpha-1. I read you. I've just been hit with a massive energy drain, but my ship seems to be back to normal. Acknowledged, Alpha-1. We need you to return to the Temeraire at once. We've detected a massive Sheevan incursion into the system. It looks like they're coming here after all. Temeraire Control, I've got a fix on the unknown ships. I can follow them to their destination. Maybe establish... Negative, Alpha-1. We need you back at the Temeraire now. That is in order. We've gone over your flight records and your report, Commander. Though you were unable to get an active scan of the unknown ships, our research division is currently analyzing what information you were able to gain from passive sensors. However, more pressing issues have presented themselves. The Sheevans are pouring into the system. Why they choose now to bring their forces here is unknown to us, but we do know that it will be only a matter of time before we are found and attacked. I need you to meet with Captain Criste and the rest of your squadron at 1800 hours for standing orders regarding your next deployment. It looks like we're about to enter the Crucible once again. All pilots, scramble, scramble. The Temeraire is under attack and needs immediate fighter support. Alpha One, form up on me. We've got to take out that Ravana's front beam cannon before it opens fire. Roger, sir. Right behind you, sir. I hear you, boss. This guy is mine. Sago's beams have been taken out. Roger that. IFF confirmed. Hostiles inbound. Alpha Wing, ignore the Sheevan destroyers. The Temeraire will take care of both of them. We need to help Epsilon take out enemy bombers and warheads. Yes, sir. We'll take them down. Yes, sir. Breaking to attack. Bad, sir. You shame me. I hear you, boss. This guy is mine. Free fire acknowledged, sir. Larage objective has been destroyed. Area looks clear. A good thing too, we've got fires on several decks in a hull breach in Sector 25. Not sure how much more we could have taken. We've got new Shivan ships warping in. That was just the first wave. 
Sweet fortune. This is it. This is the end. There's nothing more we can do. All ships, this is the Temeraire. Prepare yourselves for your final stand. If we go down, we shall go down fighting. Well, if I have to die in an uncharted system far away from home and family, I'm glad it will be in your company, Alpha Wing. I second that, sir. Alpha Wing, form up on me. Time to take down those forward beams. We've got unknown ships warping in. What the hell? They're engaging the Shaman destroyers! ships have been destroyed. The unknown vessels have warped out. All pilots engage docking maneuvers. We need to gather our forces and reconsider our tactical situation. Personal log, Commander Bay. We cheated death again. The Temeraire and her ships are safe. The Shivan madness seems to have burned itself out. There's been nothing official yet, but I'm pretty sure that there are no Shivans left in the system anymore. Those Vishnans, that's what they call themselves, at least in our speech. They have been the piece of the puzzle which has been missing from this whole thing ever since the Duke went crazy and brought us here. As soon as the Duke was touched by the psychic emissions of the Vishnans, the Shivans knew we were here. Since then, they've been doing their best to wipe us from existence. As the Shivans were the great destroyers, so the Vishnans are the great preservers. Where there is imbalance, they seek to restore balance, restore the natural order of the universe. Now the Vishnans know we're here. Because we're here, they're not going to let anything get in the way of putting things right. How do I know all this? I ask myself the same question. It's as though I've been listening to whispers all through my life and that now I'm at this particular moment in time. Everything I've heard has come together to fit in a harmony and unity that I never before thought possible. 
It's as though my entire life has been building up towards this sequence of events. I'm the only one they talk to. I've been trying to get them to communicate with others, but thus far with no success. I ask myself, after all this, why me? Why did I get cursed with this prescience? Personal Log, Commander Bay. That feeling again, as though I were a nexus, a fulcrum for the universe. When I move, the universe moves with me. I felt it in the Second Great War, but it's nothing compared to how I feel now. The Admiral doesn't believe me when I told her that the Orestes was in danger. She wants to bring the fleet back up to full strength before organizing an expedition to head back to Delta Serpentis. I'm reluctant to inform her about my current relationship with the Vishnans, how they communicate with me and no one else. I think I'd be more likely referred to Medlab than to be taken seriously. The Admiral is a good person and a fine commanding officer. This is why I undertake this next action with only the utmost reluctance. Don't do this. Corey, Taylor, you guys shouldn't be here. Return to the Temeraire. I don't want to drag you two into this for no good reason. Sorry, sir. We're not leaving. We told you, sir. We're here to watch your back. Who's gonna watch out for you if we're not with you? I've already given my notice of leave to the Admiral. You guys are still on duty. I don't want you to get reprimanded for following me. Besides, I need to do this alone. The Admiral knows we're here, Commander. As soon as we found out you were missing and had taken an environment suit, we volunteered to go and get you back. We're not forcing you to come back to the Temeraire, Commander. We just want to know why you jumped ship and left us behind. Because, Taylor, there are some things in life that one must face alone. Some things that are just so horrifying that you can't bear to bring them down upon anyone else. I've seen these Vishnans before. They've spoken to me all my life across time and across universes. They've told me I have a destiny, and my destiny is to sacrifice my humanity to save my father. I didn't believe it at first. As a kid, it's easy to deny everything. When I grew up, though, I lost my wife and my mother to the Shivans and Capella. My father is the only person I've got left. I haven't been 100% honest with you, Taylor. When I said I'd lost my father in Capella. Yes, Commander, we know. Admiral Bay, he's in danger and you are the only person who can save him. And it's not just your father, is it, Commander? It's also the 25,000 people that we left behind in Delta Serpentis. Let us come with you, Commander. If the Admiral asks, we could say the Vision's forces into coming along. I... I don't know what to say. Well, yes would be a good start. I'm sorry, Corey Taylor. I made this decision a long time ago. I just wish things could be different. Then, this is goodbye, sir? Yes, Taylor. This is goodbye. If fortune favors me, then we will see each other again. If not, I'll take this opportunity to say what an honor it has been serving with you two, and how grateful I feel to have shared this brief time. Goodbye, Commander. I know in my heart that we'll see you again. So, <clears throat> maybe not goodbye after all.
Personal log. Commander Bay. Well, I did it. I set things in motion that can't be reversed. I went against my superior officer, deserted and put into question everything I learned about loyalty and obedience so that I could fulfill something which has not been anything more than a nagging feeling all my life. Everything seems to have worked out so far. My guilt at leaving Corey and Taylor behind is still present, but I have consoled myself with the thought that I won't be dragging them into something which must be done alone. What I have experienced, I can hardly describe. For the sake of future correspondence, I'll attempt to do so now. My body is still intact, along with my physical effects. These Vishnans, however, don't exist in the same way we do. Their ships aren't crewed by personnel. If it didn't sound so strange, I'd say these ships of theirs are the Vishnans themselves. They are psychic beings, as pure in existence as anything we've come across. To call them energy beings would be to miss the point. They inhabit this universe in much the same way that we would inhabit a room. They exist in some other plane, far removed from our material existence. Their ships are vessels to carry their will, nothing more. When I came aboard, the Vishnans put my body into suspension. I will need little in the way of nourishment or sustenance. My psyche has been transplanted into a ship of my own. I don't experience reality as they do, but in essence, I now have a ship to carry out my will. Before this, the Vishnans have had no knowledge of my father. It is strange. It's almost as though my memories have unlocked specific aspects of the universe which had escaped their notice previously. They now know about the GTVA, they know how we entered this universe. Because of this, they have a connection with everyone I have ever known and met. They don't see in abstracts of time and space anymore. In a way, I think I have shown them what it means to live as a material being. Looks like the Sheevans had brought everything they had through the Nosos portal. I only see one cane and one Moloch with escorting fighters, and one bomber with. Missionaries, engage Sheevan fighters and bombers and stay away from that Moloch. Protectors, your target is the cane and any fighters that get too close to your turrets.
Damn, we need to take out its main beam before it destroys one of our ships. The Avalam is destroyed. Good thing too, the is about to exit subspace. Here she is. Keep the Shivan bombers away from her until she can make the jump again. Follow her lead, and we'll see everyone on the other side. This is it, Ross 128. This feeling of coming closer and closer to the end of this journey has grown stronger with each passing hour. Everything that has passed has been building up to this moment. It's as though my entire life before coming here has merely been a prelude, and everything that has taken place since then has a weight upon it which threatens to crush me, as though my actions carry the weight of an entire universe. It is my firm belief that what is done over the next few hours could shape the very future of the human race.
Ravana destroyers up ahead. Looks like they're blockading the node. We need to destroy their forward beams as fast as possible. all around us. They've set up an ambush on the Keeper.
last of the Shivan attack. The area reads clear. made it to the Delta Serpentis node. All ships follow her in. Personal log, Samuel Bay. We did it! The Shivans failed in their attacks on the Vishnans, and we are en route to Delta Serpentis to prove false prophecies of events that must not come to pass. No more inconsistency. No more ambiguity. Where there were once questions, there are now answers. This is what I was brought into this universe for, and this is what I was born to do. Go to unknown ships. Identify yourselves immediately. Orestes Control, this is Commander Bay, first contact operative from the GTD Temeraire. Our ships are here to assist you. Commander Bay? The Temeraire? You lost contact with your ships when you left to apprehend the GTC Duke. What the hell happened out there? It's a long story, Orestes Control. What is your status? Shivan forces ambushed us in Ross 128 after we attempted to follow the Temeraire into the system. We retreated back into Delta Serpentis where we were boxed in by the Lucifer. We're making our stand here, but the planet's gravity will prevent us from escaping 35, which we failed to drive off the Lucifer. Every time we gain the upper hand against the Lucifer, the destroyer jumps out and repairs herself for another attack. We need you to either take out the Lucifer's engines, or go for each of the reactors for a killing blow. We charge the jump engines for subspace entry. 
Estimate optimal charge in 10 minutes time. Delta Wing, now moving to disable Lucifer beam cannons. Orestes and her ships are in your and your allies' debt. Without your timely interference, our survival would have surely been uncertain. Thank you, Orestes Control. I came as fast as I could. My allies here were instrumental to your survival. I'll introduce them to you later. Commander, we're not detecting any life signs from your fighter. That's because I am the fighter, Orestes Control. I'll explain it all once I return to the ship. Keeper! What are you talking about? What great darkness? Oh my god!
In the Piscean Age, it was common belief among Christ-inspired doctrines that when one died, that person's soul essence would leave the material plane. If the person had been virtuous in life, then the soul would ascend to heaven. If the person had been sinful, then hell would await them. Dissatisfaction with the black and white concepts of sinfulness and sainthood and the difficulty in determining where the line was drawn, provoked alternative suggestions of where the consciousness departs once a person's life was over. Some have reverted to ancient Germanian religion, while others look towards Eastern philosophy for alternatives. Based on the testimony of those who had experienced near-death experiences, it was hypothesized that the consciousness enters first a plane of positive energy where the good achievements of the life past were reflected upon and lessons taken away from these events. After, the soul enters a dark plane of negative energy where the disappointments and frustrations were worked through and lessons learned from these were also taken away. Having grown thus, the soul re-merges with the universe, where it may be reincarnated into another life to continue the lessons it had learned in previous lives. It was believed that one only died because that person had learned everything they needed to learn from this life. One's death always has meaning even if it is not apparent to those who that person leaves behind. Therefore, one should not always grieve for one's lost potential, but instead gain solace from the fruitfulness of that person's life and to reflect upon the events which had helped shape that person. Know that the person's death is not meaningless, no matter how cruel it may seem. With the gift of perspective comes solace and soothing. Those persons who contained old souls had moved towards a balance between positive and negative karma. The oldest and wisest of these souls would eventually ascend to a state resembling divinity. They were one with the universe while at the same time able to guide and teach others on the material plane. They are known as Ascended Masters. To see your place in the universe, to know that you yourself are not just a moat against many, but a union of brothers and sisters working together for common good, that is when you have ascended. You are enlightened. Though these Ascended Masters are few, given enough time, their numbers will grow until we as an entire race have risen to enlightenment. After 5,000 years of recorded wars, atrocities, and injustice, I believe it is soon time for our racial consciousness to rise above our petty differences, and in the spirit of Ubuntu, realize that what makes us human binds us together. After the age of spirituality came the age of reason. After realizing that neither reason nor spirituality alone could guide us, we now combine reason and spirituality into a new way of thinking. We will exist in rational faith and in faithful rationality in a new Age of Enlightenment. We sifted the clues from silicon, blood, and smoke, saw the shape of the enemy in history shrapnel, the rebel galactic Terran intelligence's nightmare research, the corpse-choked corridors of Bosch's Iceni, the half-century-old screams of a doomed pilot who could feel the Sheevans chasing him. We called it Nagari, a non-local quantum process that could induce neural activity via subspace. A wonder and a terror. 
Could the enemy weaponize cognition? Could the hammer of light's religious awe be the result of external stimulation of the temporal lobe? Might our oldest mental structures, superstition, spirituality, fear, even love, become fatal vulnerabilities, breaches in our heuristic armor? Some saw Nagari as a pathway to singularity, a computational engine as powerful as the logic of the universe itself. Could the process be the key to utopia? Could a society of compassionate pluralism emerge from the whispers of a transcendent alien mind? Could there even be truth to ancient philosophies of spiritual ascension? But we saw apocalypse, humanity chained to an ancient, unfathomable mechanism. And we knew there was only one choice. When Bay's silver ships complete their mission and they see what we have ordered, they will call us monsters. They will cry out our sins, irrational evil, thoughtless aggression, monstrous and arbitrary cruelty. But Morpheus must proceed. This is it, everyone. We've just had the go-ahead from command to evacuate the system. Captain Bay is overseeing the exodus from the GTCV Eryphio until the Aquitaine and the rest of the Third Fleet arrive from Gamma Draconis. Ensign Bay, you'll be taking Ensign Sato and Omar to the Vega Jump Node. You'll be escorting an evacuation transport carrying refugees from Sophia Station, a civilian hub in this system. Her destination is the Vega Jump Node. We've had reports of Shivan incursions into this system from Gamma Draconis, so we need you to be on your guard and make sure the transport makes it to the node safely. Remember, pilots, these are civilians. They're not trained for military encounters and don't react well to battle. I need you to maintain extra diligence and attention while you're out there and make sure nothing goes wrong. Ready? Good. Suit up. You leave in five. Elysian Transport, this is Alpha Wing, flying off Third Fleet Headquarters. We're here to escort you to the Vega Node. To finally see you, Alpha Wing. We've been hearing reports of Shivan attacks elsewhere in the system, and frankly, we've been getting a little worried. Don't worry, the GTVA will be taking care of any Shivans who enter the system long before they reach us. Just sit tight and we'll guide you to the node. at 100 jugs are muscling their way to Capella. You hear anything about this? Shut up, Omar. This is an open channel. You want the civs to hear and cause a panic? Besides, it hasn't been confirmed by command yet, so keep quiet about stuff you don't know about, okay? Alright, keep it quiet, you two. I don't want to hear anything out of both of you until this mission is over. Keys Bay, what's with that attitude? Something crawl into your fighter and die? Sam? Sam, is that you? Ariana, what are you doing here? Are you on the transport? It is you! Yes, we're both here. Your mother and I managed to book our flight out early. We made it onto one of the first transports out of here. And who should be escorting us along the way but the handsomest pilot in the GTVA? Aren't we lucky? I'm so glad you two managed to leave safely. I promise that when this is all over, I'll come and visit. Bandits incoming. Oh hell, are they... are they Shivans? Oh god, we've got Nahimas coming in, and dragons! Fucking dragons!
incoming Shivan warheads. Please help us. Oh, God. No, please. This isn't real. This can't be happening. Oh, God. This is the GTCV Arafiel, moving to engage Shivan fighters. Status report, pilot. What happened to the transport? Arafel, father. The transport. They're dead, father. Ariana and mother, they were all dead. Is this the end? Is my journey over? I've done what I came here to do. So, has my time come? I'm here, Ariana. I'm coming to join you. We'll be together again. Welcome back to the Orestes, Commander Bay. You are lucky to be alive. Welcome back to the Orestes, Commander Bay. You are lucky to be alive. We found your environment suit floating near the Ross 128 jump node. You are only minimally alive and running out of air. We don't know how you ended up there, but you're safe now. I'm expecting a report from the ship's medical staff, but it looks like you'll be able to return to duty soon. I am sending you this transmission now instead of debriefing you. That will come in its own time. For now, understand that I have never seen the Admiral in such a mood since I joined up with this ship. You should know that he's been very relieved to have you back, Commander. Please send me a communique when you're back on your feet. For now, get as much rest as you can. We are not out of danger yet. Captain Esmar Al-Fadil, 222nd Night Wolf Squadron. Welcome back, Commander. Good to see you back on your feet again. Everyone's already suited up and launched, but I figured you needed the extra time to get briefed on what's been happening since you've been gone. As you know, we attempted to gather our battle group together after the Temerair was sent after you to support your wing in Ross 128. The Orestes does not have the mobility of the Titan-class destroyer, so it took us somewhat longer to recharge our engines and gather our forces. A Shivan ambush in Ross 128 forced us to halt our progress, and we were split off from the Temeraer. We had no choice but to retreat back to Delta Cervantes. Unfortunately, soon after we arrived in the system, we encountered a Lucifer super destroyer. While our weaponry was strong enough to pierce the Lucifer shields, we were barely holding our own. We were very lucky that your ships arrived when they did, as we were unsure how long we would have been able to hold out. 
As soon as the Satanas jumped in and destroyed the alien capital ship, all remaining alien ships, including your own, ceased functioning. We were forced to jump out and retreat, and as such we are unsure of the fate. We can only conclude that they were eliminated once they posed no challenge to the Satanas. At the moment, we are currently in the Ross 128 system being pursued by the Satanas Juggernaut. Admiral Bay has split up the battle group in order to maximize the survivability of our ships. The plan appears to have worked. The Satanas Tricraft complement has been greatly reduced in attacks against the GTL Fortune, GTCV Boreas, and escorting ships. So far, we appear to be the intended target of the Satanas, as the Juggernaut has not attempted to engage the rest of the battle group directly. We have deployed hit and run attacks against the Satanas in order to weaken its offensive ability, but these have been met with only limited success. Our engines will require a recharge, during which time we will be vulnerable. We need you to cover the Orestes during this time. The Satanas will have its forward beams functional, so your highest priority will be in taking out its main beam cannons. This is a risky procedure that has only been attempted once in history but it is the only option we have remaining. When this is all over, Commander, I am going to personally recommend you for a promotion, given everything that you have done for us today. Fortune to Orestes, we've just driven off the latest Shivan attack wave. Battle group remains intact. What is your status? Good to hear. We've just launched our remaining fighter squadrons. Estimate 10 minutes time until our engines recharge. Acknowledged, Orestes. Do you require any additional support? The Boreas and Miranda are ready to jump out to your position. Negative fortune. You'll need the protection of those corvettes to maintain your position. The Orestes is the only ship in the battle group capable of engaging the Sathanas. Commander, this is Alpha Deal. Are your fighters ready? Good to see you, Captain. Alpha Wing stands ready. This is Captain Alpha Deal taking over command authority of fighter squadrons. Alpha Wing, wait for my signal to attack. Delta and Epsilon Wings, stay with Alpha Wing and guard their approach. Roger, Zeta-1, standing by. Savannah is warped in. Ten clicks in closing. Alpha, hit your afterburners and target those beam cannons. We don't have long before the Satanas gets in range, so launch your warheads as soon as you're able. Oh man, the Satanas. I've only ever seen one of these in vid clips. They're a hell of a lot more frightening in real life. Target acquired. Relax, Alpha 4. It may look like the very face of death, but believe me, it can and will be defeated. Even if we should die today, we shall embody the true spirit of a GTVA pilot, fighting against the odds to protect those we love. Here they come, all pilots break to attack.
up. Enemy wing closing in. All beams have been taken out. Great flying pilots. Orestes, you are clear to begin your attack run. I copy. Target acquired. We've got an energy surge coming from nearby space. Something big is dropping. This is the GTD Temeraire. Hang in there, Orestes. We're here to assist. All beams and torpedoes open fire. GTC Labouchere. Maintain attack vector. Temeraire, this is Orestes Control. It's damn good to see you again. Hi, copy. Hunter Bay. This is Lieutenant Commander Corey flying off the Tamara. Told you we'd see you again. Lieutenant Taylor at your service, sir. Good to be flying alongside you again, Commander. Corey? Taylor? Hot damn, it is so good to see you two again. We'll grab a drink together once we're back home. Now we've got ourselves a Sathanas to take down. The Sathanas all integrity has fallen to critical. We're almost there. Everyone, maintain fire. This is the GTCV Boreas. Sorry to disobey your direct orders, Orestes Control, but we made an executive decision that our firepower could be put to better use here. Boreas, Miranda, it's the Fortune site. IFF confirmed. Hostiles inbound. The fortune is safe, Orestes, never fear. Now's the time to finish this battle once and for all. Zathanis' objective has been annihilated. Hi, copy. Yeah, yeah! We did it, everyone! We did it! Sure did, Taylor. We all made it through together. Once your fires have docked, rendezvous at the following coordinates. We'll be regathering the fleet before we decide on our next action. For your excellent service record and your notable achievements throughout your tour of duty aboard the Orestes, it is my great honor and pleasure to promote you to the rank of Captain. As you now hold leadership rank, you will be offered command over a GTVA vessel or fighter squadron once we return to GTVA space. Congratulations, Captain Bay. We have gathered our ships and have made contact with the Temeraire and our newest addition to the fleet, the Sanctuary. Rear Admiral Carey has briefed us on our situation, and while the news is astounding, it goes a long way in explaining our anomalous findings in these systems. We have collated information regarding the Vishnan race and require you to give a report at 1900 hours later tonight. Admiral Carey and Nietzscheev will be in attendance. We will spend the next few days attempting to recreate the energy surge experienced by our Mison reactors during the transit through the Sol node. 
This will enable us to find a way back home by recreating the effect. With the Shivan threat eliminated, this has become our highest priority. Once again, Captain, congratulations. I am proud to call you my protege, my heir, my son. To the officers and crew of the 14th Battle Group, GTVA. We have managed to repair most of the damage sustained by the Shivan attacks. My thanks go to the engineers of the GTL Solace and Fortune for their efficient work in bringing our ships back up to combat capability. However, supplies on both ships are running low, and we need to find a solution to our isolation soon, or risk running dry. To that end, we are moving back to the Delta Serpenta system, where we plan to run tests on our power reactors whilst in transit between the Delta Serpentis and Sol systems. By replicating the process which brought us here, we will be able to return to our home universe. For the attention of Captain Samuel Bay. After meeting with Rear Admiral Carey regarding your conduct aboard the Temeraire, it is my decision not to submit you for court-martial for desertion and for disobeying a superior officer due to mitigating circumstances. There is no way to tell how much influence Vishnin psychic communication had over your judgment. Testimony from Lieutenant Commander Corey and Lieutenant J.G. Taylor provides supporting evidence that you are not of sound judgment. This is the official reason. Unofficially, it is my opinion that it required courage and skill to lead a Vishnan assault force to Delta Serpentis. Without your intervention, destruction of the Orestes and her ships would surely have been likely. There is also one more reason why I have chosen not to put you under court-martial. Sam, I thought I'd let you know, while myself Rear Admiral Carey and Admiral Nechev approached your testimony on the nature of the Vishnu and psychic communications with skepticism. I have rethought my position on your report after shared experiences over the past few days. Though I am keeping the reason for my change in position unofficial, it is no less relevant to our situation at hand. I have been in communication with representatives of the Vishnu race in a manner which I find in entirely unusual. Visions and dreams just like those which you have described. For the attention of Captain Samuel Bay. Greetings, Captain. This is Captain Chris Day from the Temeraire. Rear Admiral Carey has briefed me on your activities during your first contact with the Vishnans and has authorized me to give you the following information. Engineering has completed a scan of your flight logs during your first contact mission. They did not find any evidence of an energy drain such as that which you describe. More so, your records did not log the presence of communications jamming, which you experienced upon jumping into the area. We will provide you with more information when it becomes available. Captain Lumen Christe, 56 Squadron. Glad you can make it here on such short notice, pilots. We are bang in the middle of a war here. Delta Serpentis is full of Vishnan and Shivan ships engaged in combat. Vishnan keepers and Santana's juggernauts are doing battle all over the system and we're doing our very best to stay out of the way. We're currently making our way to the Soul Jump node. However, long-range sensors have detected a massive presence of both Vishnan and Shivan forces at the node. We are prepping all remaining combat-ready fighters for launch as soon as we enter the area. This means you only have a few minutes to suit up and get to your fighters. Orestes Control will be updating your situation once more information is available. I'll be staying on the Orestes as part of Fighter Command. Captain Bay, you'll be taking Field Command of our Fighter Squadron. You have been authorized to use my Irene's fighter if you think you'll need the firepower. She's a tough old girl, and she's cut me alive more times than I can count. If you do decide to use her, Treat her well, will you? The battle group's tag network is fully online. 
Be aware that tag fire missions leave the battle group's point defenses in cooldown for several seconds. If you choose to fly an Aurora Awax fighter, Definitely Sheevan. The other looks to be Vishnu. Both ships exceed Juggernaut specifications by at least five fold. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, this is Captain Bay. Form up around the Orestes. Stand by on further orders. Roger that, Captain. They're not fighting. They're just standing there. What are they doing? I'm reading strange activity around the Soul Jump node. The rotating devices seem to be emitting some form of energy field. A weapon? Unknown Orestes Control. We should be on alert, just in case. Picking up multiple jump points forming around us, Sheevan fighters and bombers moving in. Free fire acknowledged, sir. All ships go to red alert. Fighters intercept those bombers.
Or is this control the jump node? We heard Alpha One. The vision of Vessel is modifying the jump node for transit back into our universe. If this is true, we've just found our ticket back home. All ships, move out to the salt jump node. It's time to head home. Roger that already. Following up at this now. This crate's gonna blow! Enemy wing closing in. Forces jumping in. Designation Lucifusion Dimitri. This is the Miranda. We have reached the Soul Jump Node. Engaging subspace drive. I hope you're right about this, Orestes. This is the Orestes. I can only walk in all directions. Step up your efforts, pilot. Engaging subspace drive. Wish us luck.
Heavy wing closing in. Subspace drives. This is the arrestees to all ships. Status report. Did everyone make it through? Where are we? Did we make it? We've got 
our ship jumping in. Configuration is unknown. This is the United Earth Vessel Venjun to unknown ships. Please identify yourselves and your intentions. United Earth? That means we did it! We're home! We're home? Oh, outstanding. This is the GTD Orestes of the Sol Expeditionary Force, GTVA. Your presence is welcome to us, Ringian. I wish I could say the same, Orestes. I say again, what are your intentions? Do you come in peace? Orestes, this is Admiral Steele, GTVA High Command. What is your situation? We lost contact with your ship several days ago. It's a long story, Command. We land supplies, damaged, and our crews require medical attention. Request an update on our standing orders. Your orders stand, Orestes. Morpheus must proceed. Command, this is Admiral Bay. I cannot in all good conscience carry out your orders. I must request leave to act upon my own edict. You've been compromised, Admiral Bay. Carry out your orders face the consequences. Humanity is counting on you. Admiral Bay, do you copy? This is Vice Admiral Morian of the Orestes. Admiral Bay has placed me in command of the battle group and excused himself from the bridge. Command. I am preparing to carry out our standing orders. Earthship Rengian, by the authority of GTVA High Command, I am ordering you to surrender your vessel and prepare to be boarded. This system is now under the direct jurisdiction and authority of the GTVA, as per the Beta Aquilae Convention 2358. What are they doing? Why are they doing this? False words of welcome from an invading army. Do not waste our time further with this parlay. Set red alert throughout the ship. Burn missile tubes and forward guns to fire on like a man. This birds of fellow, we die as we live on our feet. Signal 3rd Fleet HQ to send reinforcements. If you want our system, warmongers, you'll have to fight us for it. No. What the hell is going on? Enemy ship has been neutralized. Orestes, you cannot possibly mean to say that all this time we were meant as an invasion force. Command's orders were classified at the highest echelon until the time was right to carry them out. Now that we are here, they will be carried out in due order. The Sanctuary is powering up its subspace drive! All ships, stop that sleeper vessel from escaping! We're picking up an unauthorized launch from the fighter bay. This is Admiral Bay, former commander of the 14th Battle Group. I must first apologize to everyone for my part in the deception that High Command wished to play out. The Orestes and her ships are intended as a beachhead, a prelude to an invasion of this system to forcibly reunify Saul with the rest of the GTVA systems. The Security Council has been eavesdropping on Terran transmissions for weeks. 
They have deemed Earth's government a threat to mankind. Religious fanatics and pacifists who would irrevocably compromise our survival. This battle group was made up of our strongest ships in order to overpower Earth's main lines of defense. Solar forces were never meant to stand a chance. After everything we have gone through, being lost in an alternate universe, seeing our Earth dead, and our race reduced to ashes, I find I am unable to lead this assault upon our own people. I will see all of you again, if that is what fate has decided for me. Admiral Bay is warped out. All ships, Admiral Bay and the Sanctuary are to be considered traitors to the GTVA by order of command and are to be eliminated on site. Any other ship who chooses to desert will undergo the same designation. Traitors? How are they traitors? The Sanctuary and my father have just sacrificed everything to ensure the values for the GTVA are upheld. We were supposed to return to Earth with open arms and friendship. This was supposed to be a celebration, not a start of a new war. High Command has betrayed the principles on which the GTVA were formed. All our ideologies, discipline, moral guidance mean nothing now. What are we going to do, sir? I tell you what I'm not going to do, Corey. I'm not going to stand idle while the future of our race is thrown into the dust heap to satisfy the military aspirations of those few high up. You're free to do what you want to do, Corey and Taylor. You're under no obligation to follow me in what I choose to do. Me, I choose the future of our race and the pursuit of peace. We like this situation no better than you do, Captain. We'll never leave your back. You can count on us, sir. Personal log, Captain Samuel Bay, formerly of the GTVA 14th Battle Group. It has begun. On the 4th of April 2285, the United Earth Federation of Member Nations declared war on the GTVA in retaliation for the destruction of the Renjai in three days prior. Within 12 hours, half of all personnel in the Sol Expeditionary Force had either resigned from service or actively defected to Earth. The GTVA advance was forced into retreat back into Delta Serpentis, the ships of the battle group already crippled by a lack of supplies and combat personnel. Earth welcomed us with open arms, knowing that she'll need all the help she can get against the superior military might of the GTVA. The crew and passengers of the Sanctuary now have a new home, and with it, hope of a new future. As do I. Earth is my home now. Humankind left our blue planet all those years ago in search of utopia among the stars. Had their gaze been directed inwards rather than out, they would have seen the potential this blue planet holds, as well as the potential inside themselves. Years of isolation, forced introspection, have changed the Earthborn. Whereas before their ancestors could claim to be human in name, only now are they worthy to claim the title. For it is only now that they have embraced their humanity, that which makes us human binds us together. But the time for work will come later. Now's the time for healing, rest, and solace. I'm meeting up with a crew member from the Sanctuary whom I was fortunate enough to meet a couple of days ago. We grew close almost immediately, and I have offered to take her sightseeing with me around Guangzhou. Her name is Ariana.